Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, implement a stack using queues. I think this is a really good problem for beginners to kind of get familiar with stacks and queues and the relationship between both of them. So a stack is a LIFO data structure. Last in is the first value out. So basically if we add a value here and then we add a value here and then we add a value here, right? We add values in this spot, but we also remove values from the same direction because the last value that we just added three needs to be the first value that we remove. So we remove the three. Uh, then the next value that we want to remove is the next most recently added value, which is a two. So we remove it. And these operations adding, which is called pushing and popping, which is removing are both done in big O of one time and constant time. Now there's other operations like top and empty, but those are pretty trivial and really easy to code up. So we're not going to focus on those. And in this case, we are told to implement this data structure with a queue. And actually we can, uh, we're allowed to use two queues and the follow-up is to use just a single queue, but I'm just going to start with the follow-up, which is using a single queue. I don't think it even makes sense to do this with two queues. The thing I, I will mention to you is don't get hung up on implementing these stack operations in big O of one time because it's actually not even possible. We can push values in big O of one time, but we can't uh, pop. We have to pop values in big O of n time if we try to implement a stack with queues. So let's try this out. Well, what exactly is a queue? Well, a queue is, the data structure at least, is similar to how queues work in real life. It's like a line, right? A line of people. If, a, if we add a value, adding it is pretty similar to how we did with a stack, right? We add a one, now we add a two, now we add a three, right? We add values to the right side, but the difference is instead of removing values from the right side, we're going to remove values from the beginning, from the left side, right? Which is the opposite of a LIFO data structures. It's FIFO, first in, first out. So if we're removing a value, first we remove a one. Now we next we'd remove the next value, which is two, then the three, et cetera, et cetera. So you're probably wondering how can we use a queue to efficiently implement a stack? And the answer is it's not really possible to do it super efficiently, but it is possible to do it. And I'm gonna show you how. So suppose we added some values, right? We add a one. You know, this is what it would look like in our queue. And then we add a two. This is what it would look like in our queue, right? Adding values is the same. And let's say we wanted to know, okay, what's the top value of our stack? The top is the most recently added. So from the right side, we just get the, the value. It's a two. Now getting that from our queue is also just as easy. We just look at the rightmost value, right? We're not removing it. We're just looking at it, which is easy to do. You know, doing the empty operation is also pretty easy. We just take the length of the queue. It's non-zero, therefore it's non-empty. Uh, pushing, we just kind of showed how we can push values. But what about popping? That's the hard operation for us popping it's going to have to be implemented in big o of n time where n is the size of the current queue because remember we want to at least in our stack we want to pop from the top we want to pop from the right we want to remove this two value but we can't do that with a queue we can't remove from the right we can only remove from the left so we still have to remove it though. So this is our only option. So we're gonna start removing from the left. First, we're gonna remove the one value. It's the first value, but we know it's not the rightmost value that we were looking for. We're not done yet. But at the same time, we weren't looking to remove the one. The one should stay in the queue. So what we're gonna do is actually just add that one back to the right side of the queue because that's the only way we can insert values into the queue. Next, we're gonna pop the next value and we know this is the value we were looking for because there were two values originally in the queue. This is the second value. That's the value we were looking for. We pop it and then we return the true, not the true, the two value, right? Uh, and you can see that this is what the queue ends up looking like after we're done, right? It just has a single one value. And when you compare it to what the stack would look like, it's exactly the same, right? So the only downside to the queue is it takes O of N to remove a value if we're implementing it as if it were a stack. 
So that's the idea. Now let's actually go ahead and code it up. Let's code it up. So in the initializer or the constructor, we're just gonna use a single data structure, a queue. In Python, it's implemented with a deck, which is a double-ended queue, but we won't use any of those advanced features, the double-ended queue features. We'll just stick to using it as if it were just a regular queue. So pushing is one of the easy operations. We know that to push, we can just go ahead and append it to the right side of the queue, right? So the X value, the input value is just gonna be added to the queue. That's really easy. We're gonna save pop for last. So let's do top. Top is returning the top value, the most recently added value. So we can just get the rightmost index. In Python, it's really easy. We can just take negative one and that'll return the rightmost value of the queue. Or we could just take the length of it minus one. Uh, either one works, but we're gonna return this and that's all we need to do for empty we're just going to return uh, we want to return true if it is empty so basically if the length of self.q is equal to zero then we return true if it's not equal to zero then we return false it's not empty now for the last one pop it's also not too bad though because remember we want to create a loop basically we want to loop while you know we haven't reached the last element so while uh, so how many times are we going to iterate how many elements are we going to pop basically the length of our queue minus one we want to pop every value except the last one so what we're going to do here is say self dot q dot pop left from the left is where we're allowed to pop from in our queue and this is the method for it in python and we're going to take that pop value and just go ahead and now add it to the right side right so we can say self dot q dot append or we can just say self dot push because remember we created a method up above which will add the value to the rightmost side and self.push is a little bit shorter than writing out this whole line so that's what we're going to stick to right we're going through every element popping it from the left adding it to the right except for the last element right the last element is going to be the one that's not added back to the queue so we're going to say self.q.pop left after we went through every value except for the last value and then we're actually going to pop the last value and end up returning it as well so now that's the entire solution let's run it to make sure that it works and as you can see on the left yes it does work i don't know why it looks like it's not efficient this is about as efficient as we can get so i really hope that this was helpful if it was please like and subscribe it really supports the channel a lot consider checking out my patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully i'll see you pretty soon thanks for watching